Hi, welcome, and I hope you're doing well. Here I have the Dell XPX laptop. In this video here, I'll be doing a step-by-step -step on how to tear down the computer. And during the tear down, I'll explain to you on how to upgrade the hard drive, maybe change the battery, change the motherboard, things like that. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Let me show you the keyboard. Now I actually need to shut it down because the computer is a lead sensor. A lead sensor meaning that when a computer is shut down and you, if you lift the screen up, it would automatically turn on the computer. So this computer, like I said, it has the lead sensor or the screen sensor, that's what they call, meaning that when you lift the screen up, it would turn on the computer for you. So let me go ahead and turn it off, shut it down. And I wanted to share with you the layout on the keyboard. So this is how the keyboard looks like. This is the touchpad. It doesn't have the numeric numbers on the right side. So you, if you're going to type numbers, you have to use it on the top here. The keyboard is silent when you type. So this is this is pretty good keyboard. And on the top right corner here is actually the uh, power button. If you have a froze screen and you need to shut it down, you just got to press and hold this power button to shut it off. This button here is actually acting as a fingerprint uh, reader. So it reads off your fingerprint print as well uh, to unlock or to key in the password. And this is the uh, Intel Evo i7 and this is the 11th generation uh, model. Okay, so let me go ahead and turn it to the back. I'll show you the model here. This one here is the Dell XPX. Does it say anything here? It says P117G, but that's not the right model. Let me go ahead and get the right model here for you. Okay, so this is the box. Sorry about the box, it's pretty big. Uh, this model here is XPX9310-7351. SL V PUS. Okay, let's go ahead and start taking it apart. This is the uh, torque screwdriver. I think this is a T4. Let's go ahead and remove the torque screws at the bottom. We need to remove the back cover to get inside of the laptop. The screws are all the same in sizes, so it's okay if you mix mess the, the, the screw. Alright, once you remove all the screw, let's go ahead and get a metal prying tool to try op pry open the, uh, the computer. As you pry open, I actually uh, use my finger to push it apart. It is all clipped all together. So there are clippers all along the side. It clip onto it. So you need to put a little bit of pressure to push it up to pry it open. 
All right, so once you pry it open, this is what it looks like. And this entire here is the battery. Let me show you the model of the battery. It's 722K55, 52 uh, watts battery. Let's go ahead and disconnect the battery. All you gotta do is to slide the cable down. And that's how you disconnect the battery. There are four tiny screws that holds on to the battery. Once you remove it, the battery should, oh sorry, there are five actually. There's one hidden here. So once you remove all the five screws, the battery will just come straight up. I wonder what is this extra screw doing over here on the battery. So there was one extra screw um, got stuck on the battery. Anyway, okay. Now this is the M.2 solid state drive. This is the one that holds on to the uh, the windows, your data, everything is held on this M.2 solid state drive. So once you remove this screw, let's go ahead and slide the uh, this copper heat sink to your right. So this is the gap that slide it in to hold it. So you slide it out and just lift the M.2 slightly and move it to your right. And that's how you remove the uh, M.2 drive. You can actually upgrade this M.2 to a larger one. This is one terabyte. If you want a larger, you can go up to two terabyte or even four terabyte if you want. And I have I made a separate video on how to clone the M.2 over to the larger drive. So I have the link in the description. If you like, you can go ahead and check it out. Alright, so this is very straightforward. Um, this is the heatsink. The CPU is right in the center. And let's go ahead and disconnect the, uh, the CPU fan. Let's go ahead and remove this. The cable, you just got to push it up. That's how you disconnect that cable. So once you unscrew four of these screws that attach to the heatsink, the heatsink and the CPU fan will just come right off altogether. 
So this build right here is heat sink and CPU fan are made all together in one one piece. And if you want to find the replacement part, uh, right here it says CN-0FRK0V. And if your CPU is overheating, if your CPU gets hot really fast and or the fan goes on a high speed all the time, I recommend you to come and clean off the uh, thermal paste. So this thermal paste is still a little bit moist. I mean it's not wet but I can feel like it's still soft. Uh, so I'll just leave it as this. But if yours is very dry and if you don't see much of the thermal paste, I recommend you to use the alcohol wipes. So use this alcohol wipes, wipe it down on the heat sink and the CPU and apply yourself some thermal paste on it. Okay, so now some of you guys is going to say like you just need a very little like half the size of a grain rice. Um, you know, I think that is not a little bit. So this is pre-applied by Dell company. This is from the manufacturer straight up. I have not opened this computer before. This is my first time doing it. And as you can see how much thermal paste they put in. This is a lot. This is not just a little bit like one grain of rice. This is a lot of thermal paste they apply onto. So do not hesitate to just put a little bit. Put not too much to overflow onto the motherboard. You can overflow onto the CPU, the green board right here, but not onto the motherboard. So this is a good amount of thermal paste is being applied. All right, so this is the speaker. As you can see, the speaker here is The speaker is glue on. Since my speaker is not blown, like I said, this is a brand new laptop. I'm not going to take the speaker out. But if your speaker is blown, I believe you just have to yank the speaker out. Because this is double sided tape and glue onto it. Okay, uh, let's see. If you have a bad keyboard, let's say you spill something on the keyboard. Uh, just so you know the keyboard is not replaceable You can see that the keyboard is not a separate keyboard is punched down Meaning that you would have to replace the palm rest the touchpad the keyboard all together one big piece Okay Now you're gonna ask me if there's a CMOS battery obviously you do not see the CMOS battery here so all new computer nowadays the battery is running off of the main battery the big one here okay if you remove or disconnect the cable long enough it will reset the uh, the BIOS or the uh, the motherboard now I'm not sure why this Dell try to make like Apple using this this display board right here I just feel like at any given time you might snap the cable or break it why can't they just go back to the old school that works for many many years but anyway let's take it apart and see what what we can find here and they're trying to make the screw so tiny that you can easily st strip the screw if you're not be careful enough Okay, so the screw doesn't come out. You can only unscrew it a little bit and then this bracket will just come straight up. Once the bracket is out, I believe you can just lift the screen up. They are just like a Lego. You snap onto the connector here. One it says EDP. One it says CCD. I'm not sure what they stand for, but if you know what they stands for, Please comment below, uh, educate me as well. Like I said, this is my first time doing this. 
I'm not 100% sure what it stands for. Probably something to do with the webcam or the touch screen or maybe the LCD. All right, so there are three more screws here. It looks like this is a lot easier to remove than the Apple ones. Okay, that's how you get it. Now, let's go ahead and disconnect the hinge. If you have a cracked screen and you want to replace your screen, I highly recommend you to replace the entire assembly, meaning that the screen and the LCD glass, the touchscreen all together in one big piece. Do not just replace the glass on itself. This is the touchscreen. At any given time, if you miscalibrate the touch sensor, you might screw up the whole touchscreen. So always I recommend to replace entire screen on its own. Okay, once you remove that six hinges, uh, sorry, the six screws, uh, lift up the two side of it, this hinge, you can just lift it up at the 90 degree angle. I use my thumbnail to push it and lift it. And now I think I can slide the uh, keyboard out. Okay, so this is your entire keyboard, the touchpad all together. That's how you remove it. And this is the screen. So if you have a cracked screen, definitely you need to replace the entire piece just like this. Okay. Now for those of you who wants to replace or remove the motherboard, it's very straightforward. All you have to do is disconnect all the cables, like the Wi-Fi, the backlighting on the keyboard, the touchpad here. Okay, this is your keyboard. For some reason, it backtracked to the motherboard. It's funny how the way they designed this, huh? If you can see it that the main keyboard here is not connected into um, into the motherboard you connect it to a separate board right here it connects to a separate board and this separate board redirect back the data onto the motherboard I guess they try to make it um, really compact as in the size of it is only 13 inch so the motherboard has full of all the components. They can't add additional space, the keyboard clipper onto the motherboard. So they add it separately and redirect the data back to it. I think that's what is happening. All right, so this is it. Um, I hope that this video helps. Uh, I know that I'm not at the best explanation in this video here. Um, it's kind of late night for me right now, so I apologize if the message is not clear, uh, things like that. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, uh, please click the like button. I really appreciate that. And subscribe if you haven't. Um, please comment below if you need any help, any questions. And until next time, please take care now.